Hi, my name is Jared Parker. I'm a uh, fertilizer salesman and practicing agronomist with a company called Chemical Dynamics in Plant City, Florida. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the process and methods of fertigation. Uh, fertigation is simply the blending of water and fertilizer into the same line in order to feed the plants. So think of uh, sitting at the dinner table. You have your food, you have your drink. Food would be the fertilizer and your drink would be the water for the plant. So with the fertigation, the, the plant is getting both at the same time through the same line in the most efficient way possible. This allows for the plant to develop, to grow, to produce fruit that we can actually eat on our dinner tables at home. So the reason why certain farms like Hinton Farms decide to do drip uh, fertigation is because it is the most efficient way possible, especially with strawberries, to fertilize the crop. In order to decide what type of fertigation we need in the, uh, in the farm and what type of fertilizer we need to use, we take an array of different samples. The two main samples we take are soil samples and leaf samples or also called tissue samples. These are both nutritional evaluations that are taken periodically throughout the season. Soil sampling being the first before the crop is even put in the ground and leaf sampling or tissue sampling being the one that is re-evaluated throughout the life cycle of the crop. When we're pulling these samples as we're analyzing the farm we're implementing our four R's, which is the, the right place, right rate, right time, and right source. By keeping track of everything that is in the farm and everything that we're putting into the farm, we are staying true to those best management practices on the farm in a very practical way. Well, thanks to Jared for teaching us about all of that stuff, like tissue samples and soil samples, so important. And so he also referenced the fertigation fertilization process that you do here at Hinton Farms. Melissa, can you talk a little bit about how that's different from maybe more conventional fertilization processes? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as farmers, we strive to be good stewards of the land. So what that means is we want to take care of this land as best as possible. You know, this farm has been in our family for generations and we want to preserve and take care of it for future generations too. And so that requires us to use the absolute best, uh, most sustainable practices that we can. And in this case, it is fertigation fertilization. So, you know, back a long time ago when our farm first started, my granddad and grandma would use granular fertilizer and they would spread it out over the whole field and then it was really difficult because if you got too much of it out there, it would burn the plants. Or if the weather was too hot or it rained too much, you would either get too much or not enough fertilizer delivered to the plants where it needed. Well, thankfully for technology, we've, we've come up with this um, <clears throat> fertigation fertilization technology and, and drip tape, which is really a simple concept. It's really like a plastic water hose. Um, if you've ever seen a soaker hose in your garden, you know that it delivers just a little tiny amount of water over a long period of time. And that's a similar concept here. This is basically just like a plastic water hose that runs down the middle of each strawberry bed. But what it allows us to do is to get exactly the right amount of fertilizer to the plant exactly when they need it. We're not providing so much that it leaches down into the soil or, or into the aquifer. We're not providing too little to where the plants don't grow like they should. We're providing exactly what they need because when we turn on the pump and this, um, this drip tape fills up with water, there's teeny tiny little holes in here. Okay. And so the water and fertilizer mixture just drips out at a slow pace um, and takes it right to the plant. We're not losing anything through evaporation or anything like that. It's very effective. You know, what's fascinating to me is you think about a farm, or at least I think about a farm, and I think about the science behind it. Sure, we talked about photosynthesis and, and the elements, the nutrients, phosphorus, and, and so forth. But I think sometimes the students might not consider even the STEM skills that go into farming, right? And this is an engineering design challenge, right? Mm -hmm. How do we, somebody had a problem, you guys had a problem. How do I get the best nutrition to these plants at the right time. And so, as you mentioned, you used to just do it in the beginning of the season or you, however you used to do it. Now it's the right place, right time through something like this. Somebody came up with that solution to a problem and here it is, you probably have miles of this stuff going throughout these strawberry fields. It's just, yeah. it fascinates me when you think it, about that in, that in that context. So it really takes that team mentality. I think you might have a little background in engineering. Isn't that where you started? I did, I got a degree in engineering from the University of Florida. And after I got out, I decided that, uh, you know, really farming is what I wanted to do. It's, uh, 
could have gotten a job in engineering and, and probably had a pretty good salary, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've been happy. I mean, it's nice to be outside. I mean, what better life could you have than to be outside and, and grow things and see things growing and know that we're sending nice, beautiful produce to the consumer, so it's a good life. Sure, but you've also, I'm sure, translated lots of those skills that you learned right into your current job. Well, so. you know, it is interesting. When we first started, I was explaining to you, before we first started, we had to set up the irrigation systems in some of our farms, so my engineering degree did uh, come in handy a little bit. It's fascinating. Thank you for sharing. And we have more video questions coming in. So how about Hope from Miss Nelson's class? How do you know what uh, crops? I believe it's about crops. She's going to ask. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Hi, my name is Hope and I'm from Jet How do you know which nutrients your crops need? So how do you know what nutrients the crops need? Bob? Well, the University of Florida, as I said, that they, they give us a program of what we want to put out each year at, at the beginning of the season. So during the season, we provide nutrients to the plants as, as prescribed in that program. But th it varies from time to time. So when at the beginning of the season, when there's a lot of blooms, then they need one nutrient. But as they're, as they're growing into strawberries, they need a different nutrient. If it gets too hot, then you cut back a little bit. So we vary the nutrients that we apply during the season. And it depends on the variety sometimes too, because some varieties have uh, uh, nutrient requirements that other varieties don't have. So it's pretty complicated. Okay, well, we wanna take a pause. If you haven't answered the math challenge that was up, uh, please go ahead and uh, answer that. I think they're going to show it on the screen now. Make sure you get your answers in. We're gonna review those answers in just a little bit. And in addition to that, of course, you can use that hashtag science of soil VFT, but, we also love seeing the pictures of your classrooms, and we love the questions, and there's a bunch of questions coming in on Twitter as well, uh, even comments. Locust Grove, FFA, thank you so much for watching your ag class, enjoying this webinar. We really appreciate that. Um, Mrs. Nelson's class, they're studying plants right now, so they found it just fascinating that we're doing that at the same time. But we had a couple other questions that were, were interesting. I think we might have touched upon this one a little bit earlier, but... Um, Stephanie Fry wanted to know in Red Lion ASD uh, area school district, why is it necessary to use plastic to grow your fruits and vegetables? I'm guessing they're talking about that plastic mulch. That, that's, a, that's a good question. Plastic is crucial to growing strawberries and because we didn't used to use plastic. We just had the plants placed in the bare ground. And the plastic keeps uh, has m several, several advantages for us. First of all, it keeps the moisture in the ground. Without that plastic, the moisture would just evaporate. And then it keeps the strawberries, instead of laying on the ground and becoming soft, the strawberries lay on top of the plastic. The plastic keeps the weeds out. It maintains some heat in the ground when it gets cold. We have freezes here in Florida. So when it gets cold, it maintains some heat in the ground. So there's a lot of uses for plastic. And I hope that answers Red Lion's question as well about, they were wondering about humidity and how that impacts, as you were mentioning earlier. So uh, just, just really great questions. Continue to submit those. Absolutely, we love to see those. It's, it's great stuff. But right now, we want to go back to Jake. We're going to learn more about peppers.